the electrical side of the problem is how do you shrink this down and get it on board so the fly can actually lift off and fly around. And again, sure there are smaller batteries out there. You know, this picture is kind of for dramatic effect. You can go get a hearing aid battery or something that's actually much tinier than this. But even those, the best batteries that you can just go buy off the shelf are way too big for something like this. So that's kind of how we build them. Okay, so I'm going to move on to how we actually make these things fly. And again, you might think we know how to make big things fly with things like propellers and jets. Why don't you just build a really tiny propeller or a really tiny jet? But you run into the same problem. You can't just build a super tiny jet. It's not that simple. So even though engineers have been really good at this for about a century, we kind of had to swallow our pride and say, okay, we actually have no idea how insects fly. And we had to go to biologists who study real insects and say, okay, how does this work? You know, what are they doing? And obviously they're flapping their wings to fly, right? There aren't any little flies out there with rocket engines strapped to them. As cool as that <laughs> I'm sure, you know, again, maybe in movies there are. But in real life, they're doing it with their wings. So there are biologists who study live insects and how they actually do this. So I apologize, this video is a little dark. Oh, thank you for getting the lights. This is a real bee, not a robotic bee. We're not that good yet but they have it kind of sitting here in front of the camera, flapping its wings. And this is actually slowed down about 100 times. So in real life, that, the wings would just be a blur if you were looking at it with your naked eye because they're flapping so fast. And this bee is just kind of happily sitting there staring into the camera. What's more interesting is what they do when they want to steer. So here's a video we took in our lab of a fly glued in front of a computer screen. So the screen the fly is looking at would be off the top of this video. You can't see it. And on that screen, there's going to be a little black blob that expands very rapidly. So from the fly's point of view, it thinks it's about to crash into something. And you'll see it actually raise its legs up to brace itself for impact and then start flapping this left wing a lot harder than it's flapping the left right wing as it tries to steer away. But we have the poor guy glued in place, so he can't actually steer away. <laughs> but he's not actually going to crash. It's just a harmless computer screen. We're not throwing stuff at him or anything. So the fly was not harmed. Um, <laughs> So, How did you learn to hmm? um, th there's, you can, so the question was how do you unglue them? There's another chemical that dissolves the glue that hopefully is not harmful to the fly. Um, I didn't actually do this experiment, so I'm not sure. So the videos like this let us study how the wings are actually flapping, what they do to steer, what they do to stay in place. And I don't have pictures of this, but we can also do dissections to figure out how the muscles are working, what's going on in the inside to drive the wings, and then that allows us to build mechanical wings that can do the same thing. So here's two mirrored images of a set of mechanical wings flapping back and forth, kind of like the bee was a couple videos ago. And you know these wings are kind of fake looking. They don't really look as fancy as the real insect wings. Another thing we're doing is working on wings that look a lot more like, look and act a lot more like the real insect wings. So this is actually artificial. The way they make it is kind of cool. They do a three-dimensional scan of a real insect wing make a mold out of that scan and then pour a liquid plastic into the mold so you get a three-dimensional repl replica of the wing. And then can flap it with you know, a robot, not the actual insect. And what we can do then is put two of these wings on a little robot body, and this next video goes kind of fast, so pay attention. The robot's going to start at the bottom, start flapping the wings, not slowed down this time, so they're just going to look like a blur. Sometimes people see this video and don't believe me that it's actually flapping, but it is. And lift itself off the top of the screen after this little intro slide. There you go. So did everybody catch that or should I play it one more time? Okay. Last chance, pay attention. Okay, so that's cool, but there's two kind of fishy things about this video that some of you may have noticed already. Anybody guess? Okay, exactly. So I, kind of, I talked about the wires already, you know, the battery problem. This thing obviously isn't lifting a battery along with it. But I didn't really mention the rails. And can anybody guess what the rails are for? Stability, stability right? So the two problems we're working on solving now, I talked about power. The second one is stability. This is actually an area where, and kind of like eating, you know, how the animals can store more energy than a battery can, stability and balance is another area where animals have a really big jump on robots. You know, if we're walking along, and you trip, you don't think to yourself in slow motion, oh no, I tripped, I need to stick my leg out and stand back up, okay, I caught myself, now I'm okay, right? At least I can't think that fast. I don't know if any of you guys can. Same thing with a flying animal. If it's flying along and a gust of wind comes and blows it, it doesn't think, 
oh no, I got blown to the side, I need to flap this wing harder and turn myself right side up again, okay, now I'm okay. Right? The fly doesn't have time to think that fast, it just does it automatically. Kind of like, you know, same if you have reflexes, if somebody pokes at your eye and you blink or whatever. But the robot doesn't know, to do that, know how to do that unless we tell it to. So since we haven't gotten there yet, we just got it to lift off the ground, we pretty much have training wheels to keep it upright. Right now the robot is like, you know, this little kid who knows how to ride his bike, knows how to go forward, maybe knows how to steer a little bit, but if you take the training wheels away, there's a good chance he'll fall over. Same thing with the rails. So my PhD thesis is actually on how do we get rid of these rails and use the wings to steer. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to the crawling robots real quick and then Becca will talk about our soft robots. So very similar to what we do with the flying robots, the people who study crawling robots work with biologists who study insects that run or crawl and then figure out how to build a robot that does the same thing. So this next video, again, this is a real co cockroach, not a robot, scurrying across the screen. The cool thing here is he's running across this mesh with big holes in it, but actually doesn't have to, here, I'll play it one more time as I'm talking, doesn't have to think about where it's placing his foot each time. It's not, I'm gonna put my foot here, and then I'm gonna put my foot here. It just kind of scurries across and has those little spines on its legs that can catch on wherever it steps and just keep going. So. We have another graduate student in our lab who's not here tonight who you know, studies how real cockroaches move, how they move all six legs, and then build a robot that can do the same thing. And the motion is actually pretty similar. So this goes kind of fast. The guy scurries across the screen. <laughs> this one's on a loop, so you can see it again. And you notice one issue, the same issue the fly has, is this guy has wires dangling off to provide power for now. It's a little easier to put power on board something that's on the ground because you don't have to lift it into the air. The nice thing about the cockroach is it doesn't have the stability problem. Since it has six legs, it actually keeps three on the ground at any given time to make a tripod. So it does that while the other three pick up and move forward and then it doesn't have to worry about falling over. We don't just do cockroach robots. We also have a graduate student working on a centipede robot. This one's kind of caught in a cup so it can't get out, but you know, these guys are really fast, they're really good at climbing, and the cool thing is they have flexible bodies with multiple segments, so they can kind of bend around corners, kind of like that guy's bending up to the 90 degree angle at the bottom there. And this one doesn't go quite as fast, but we kind of have this little centipede robot that can twiddle along. <laughs> but it doesn't climb yet, we're working on that. <laughs> 